I joke about pinching pennies because at the end of the day, a penny saved is just a penny. But if we're talking about growing and compounding our money, then things are different. Because if you start with a penny today and you can double your money every single day for 30 days, after 30 days, that penny is going to turn into more than five million dollars. The whole idea behind compound interest is you're going to invest some money today, this money is going to grow, and now you have your money working hard to make you money, and the money that your money made working hard to make you money. So it's almost like your money is having babies, and your money is just going to keep compounding and growing, which means you have more money working hard to make you money. Even if you're not investing your money in the traditional sense, you should hopefully still be earning this type of compound interest, because if you go to work every single day, you're compounding your knowledge and your skills. And so the longer you go to work, the more skills you going to learn and the more valuable you're going to be as an employee. That's why as you get older, your pay should hopefully go up too because you're compounding your knowledge, you're compounding your skills, and now you're more valuable, which means you should be getting paid more money. It's the same concept with your money, except more money doesn't give you more skills, it just gives you more power. Like this $100 bill doesn't have more skills than this $20 bill does, it just has more power because assuming that $1 will buy me a machine that's going to make me a nickel, now with this $100 bill, I can buy 100 of those machines. With this $20 bill, I can only buy 20 of those machines. So I'm going to be able to earn more nickels with this $100 bill than this just because I got more power with this piece of paper than this one. But this is where compounding becomes so powerful because every dollar I earn will buy me another machine that makes me a nickel and I need 20 nickels to earn a dollar. This $20 bill will get me 20 nickels which will buy me one more nickel making machine. This $100 bill will earn me 100 nickels, which will buy me five more nickel making machines. So I'll be able to earn more nickels with this just because I got more buying power. The more dollars you have, the more dollars your money is going to be able to make. And the longer you let your money sit there and invest and compound, the more your money is going to be able to grow. That's why Albert Einstein calls compound interest the eighth wonder of the world because now your money is working hard to earn you more money. And every time your money does that, you're going to have more money that you can send out to work hard and earn you more money. So it becomes a system almost like this machine that's just working to produce you more money and anytime you produce more money you can buy another machine that's going to be working to produce you more money you don't need a ton of money to start but the longer you have the more your money is going to be able to grow which is why you're going to see the biggest returns towards the end of your compounding like even if you start with just one penny and you can double your money every single day day one you have just a penny and day eight you have a dollar by day 21, you have $10,000. Now your money is really starting to grow. And by day 30, you're going to have over $5 million and you started with just a penny. Now, I already know what you're thinking. But Jaspreet, if it was so easy for me to double a penny, I'd already be doing that right now. Now, I know it's not easy to double your money every single day and that's not the goal, but you can do this over time. There's a couple of different strategies that you can follow to compound your money and really build your wealth over time. There's an active strategy and a passive way. Actively compounding your money is literally what the word says it is. You are being active and you are buying something, selling it, and now you're using your profits to go buy something else. You see this all the time in real estate. You go out and you buy a $100,000 property, you renovate it, whatever, you fix it up, and you go sell this property for $150,000. Now, instead of going and buying another $100,000 property, you go out and you buy a $150,000 property and you renovate it and now you sell it for $225,000. And so slowly you are growing your money and compounding your money because you can do bigger deals. Now you can do two deals at one time. You can do $200,000 deals and hopefully sell both of these for $150,000 each and now you're just compounding what you're doing. You're slowly growing what you can do because you make some money and you take your profits and you reinvest it into whatever it is you're doing. This is exactly what I do on YouTube. Anytime somebody watches our videos on YouTube, I get paid. Thank you for your penny. Now, when I get this YouTube money, I can take all of it and go out and buy myself some new exotic cars, go get myself a new Gucci wardrobe, and go enjoy some fine dining at Chipotle with some extra guac. But what I actually do with this money is I reinvest this money back into our business. That way we can grow our business bigger. I'm actively working to compound this money by sacrificing some of these luxuries today that I could buy by reinvesting this money back into the business. That way I can grow the whole pie bigger. When I was in college, I started a cell phone accessory business with a friend of mine. And we didn't have a ton of money and we wanted to start selling these like cell phone battery packs. And at the time we only bought like 10 of them because that's all we could afford. And so we bought 10 of these battery packs and we sold them and then we took this money that we got and our profits and we went out and I think we bought 20 battery packs and then we bought 50 and then we bought 100 and so it was like a slow compound where we took whatever money we had to buy these battery packs we sold them then we took this money and our profits and we compounded it and that way we were able to buy more sell more buy more sell more and so you don't get to enjoy the profits when you're compounding it like this because if you're taking all of your profits and reinvesting it you're actively compounding it to grow the whole thing bigger when you do this the hope and the whole idea is you're going to start 
start off with something small, a hundred dollars or a thousand dollars, and you're gonna grow it to something a little bit bigger. You're gonna turn a thousand dollars into two thousand dollars. Now you're gonna reinvest the two thousand dollars, turn it into four thousand dollars, then the four to eight, the eight to sixteen, and you're gonna slowly keep growing it. There is a risk though, because if you keep growing it and you don't take out any money for yourself, eventually there's a chance that things don't work out. And now you grew your one thousand dollars into a hundred thousand dollars or a million dollars, and then things fail. And if you didn't take out any money for yourself, now you're left with nothing. So if you're doing this type of active compounding, you really just gotta find the right risk balance for you because anytime you pull a dollar out, that's a dollar that you cannot compound. But if you keep the dollars in there, then you take on more risk. I mean, this is one of the things that made Elon Musk so financially successful because in the early stages of his career, when he would make $25 million, he would reinvest all of this money back into his business and he would leave nothing for himself because he wanted to compound and grow his dreams and his wealth by taking every dollar he had and throwing it back into his beliefs. The second way you can compound your money is the passive way. And this is what a lot of people think about when they think of compound investing, because now what you're doing is you were taking your money and you're putting it into an investment. And you're going to let your money grow. And anytime your money makes money, you are going to reinvest that money back into it. That way this money that you have growing is going to keep growing, even if you don't add money into the pot, because your money is growing and this new money is going to be working to make you money too. When I was in high school, anytime we talked about compounding or investing your money in my math class, the example that my teacher always gave me was investing your money in a CD in the bank or a savings account. So the way it works is you put your money in the bank, either in a CD or a bank account, and then your money is going to grow. And as your money sits there, it will compound and grow because now this money that your money made will grow even more. But the interesting thing about this, so if we write bank account, you're not going to get a very good return, especially nowadays. A uh, savings account nowadays is going to pay you like 0.1% if you're lucky, and a CD is going to pay you 1% if you're lucky. So if we look at this where you get a 1% return on your money, and I'm being very generous here, it is going to take you a long time for you to double your money. At this rate, keeping your money in the bank is going to take you 72 years to double your money. So you're not building wealth in this lifetime. Maybe your great, 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 great grandkids will have some decent money to play with. If you're really looking to compound your money and grow your money, then you need to be putting your money in assets. So this would be things like the stock market. If you're investing in your money in the stock market, the goal is to grow your money by investing in companies that you believe in, because over time, these companies are going to make more money, which would make the stock price more valuable for you. Now, if I come back here to active, if you do a business or flipping like we talked about, there's really no limit or kind of a baseline to how fast you can grow your money here. I mean, it's not super unreasonable to see 100% growth in a year. So it's really kind of uncertain as to how good of returns you'll see. It just depends on what it is you're doing and how good you are at it. So, you know, there's really no baseline here. The stock market, on the other hand, has gone up by between 8 to 10% a year historically. So even if we stay on the low end here, 8%, you're gonna be able to grow your money much faster. And the thing you gotta understand about the stock market is there's a couple of different ways that you can make money. You can make money through appreciation, which is when the price of your stock goes up, and you can also make money through dividends, which is when the company that you invest in literally just gives you a cash check. So if you can grow your money by 8% a year in the stock market, you can double your money every nine years. That's a whole lot better than 72. Now, if we kind of really look at compounding your money, this is where a lot of people assume that you have to invest in dividend paying companies, which are companies that pay you cash payments. That way you can compound your money because in that case, when you get this dividend, then you could reinvest this dividend back into the stock market and buy more shares. That way now your money is actually growing. So you invest in dividend paying company, this company gives you some cash, then your money automatically gets invested. That way you can own more shares. And now as you own more shares, you're going to get more dividends. As you get more dividends, you can buy more shares. So it creates this reoccurring cycle of growth and compounding. This dividend reinvestment strategy is a great way for you to build your own wealth because now anytime you get paid, you're going to automatically reinvest this money. But what I also want you to understand is that not every company pays a dividend. The only companies that really pay dividends are really more established and more mature companies because these are companies that at the end of the year, they have so much cash in their bank account, they have no better use for their money because if they could reinvest this money back into their company and grow their company bigger, then they would probably do that but they have so much cash where they're just like, you know what, let's just start giving it away to our shareholders because we have no better use for this cash. 
And so people assume that the only way to compound their money is to invest in dividend paying companies because these are companies that are giving you cash and when you get this cash, you can reinvest it. But you can also compound your money by investing in companies on the stock market that are reinvesting their profits. If you find more of a startup company that you really like and you really believe in and you think is a good value and you invest in this company and this company, anytime they make money, they don't give it away in dividends. They take this extra cash and they reinvest it back into their company. So they're really not making that big of profits like how Amazon during the early years of it being public never made any money because anytime it made money, it reinvested it back into the company. If you invest in a company like this, then your money is still compounding because you own shares of a company that's using all of its money to grow itself. And so while you're not getting this cash payment and accumulating more shares, your shares become more valuable because of this compounding, because the company that you're investing in is compounding all their money because they're taking all of their profits and reinvesting it. And there are pros and cons to both because this type of investing where you invest in more of a startup type company has more risk because there's a chance that this company will fail. Like we talked about here, if you're actively compounding your money, which is what this company is doing, there's a chance that it could fail. And so, yeah, they're reinvesting all their profits and they're doing everything they can but if this strategy fails, then there goes your investment. But on the flip side with these dividend investments, because these dividend paying companies are typically larger and more mature, you're gonna have a safer investment, which usually comes with a smaller return. So you might not see the stock price go up as fast and your average dividend is typically somewhere in the two to 4% range. It really depends on the company. So it's not anything huge and hopefully it will go up over time, but you just gotta kinda understand where you wanna be. It comes with lower returns here, higher potential returns here, but more risk. The second thing is with dividends. Anytime you get paid a dividend, you have to pay taxes on this dividend. So while you take this dividend and you reinvest it, you still have to pay taxes on the money that you made, even though you don't actually get that money in your bank account because you're, in this case, reinvesting that money. Another way that you can compound your money is by investing your money in real estate. This is my actually favorite place to invest my money because not only do you get passive income, if you do it right, you will also get the appreciation in the property. And so with real estate, when I invest my money, I'm looking for a 7% annual return on my money, cash on cash minimum. Ideally, something closer to 8%, but 7% is my real minimum. Now, the thing that you gotta understand here is that if I get a 7% return on my money, it's gonna take me 10 years to double my money. But in this case, the 7% is a cash on cash return that I'm getting every single year in my pocket. So if I buy a $100,000 property, that means every year I'm making at least $7,000 in profit. Hopefully over time, this is gonna go up if rent prices go up, but that means I'm making $7,000 a year. And now what I can do is after 10 years, I will have this cash in the bank that I can use to go out and buy another property, or I can just take my own cash, go out and buy another property and supplement it with this money that I'm making from real estate. The reason that real estate becomes so attractive now on top of this is because not only are you getting this cash flow, but if you're buying your properties in a good area where people want to live, then you're also going to see the property value go up too. So I buy this $100,000 property and every year I'm getting $7,000 a year in passive income. But over time, this property might go up in value to let's say $200,000. And now if it comes time for me to sell this property, I sell it for $200,000, I can do something called a 1031 exchange. It's a little loophole in the real estate world where now I can take all $200,000, pay $0 in taxes and go out and buy a $200,000 property that's going to pay me with more passive income. And so when I try to do that in the stock market with dividends, the first thing I had to do was pay taxes on my dividends, and then I could reinvest these dividends. With real estate, if the property value goes up, now I can sell the property, pay no taxes today on those profits, and go out and buy myself a bigger property that's gonna pay me with more money. Plus, even on the passive income, the cash flow that I'm making from real estate, this money that I'm getting here, there's a lot of tax breaks that I get with real estate that I don't get with the stock market. So even as I get the $7,000 a year in passive income, I don't have to pay taxes on all $7,000 because there's other tax deductions that I can take, like something called the depreciation tax deduction, which says that I get to get a deduction because my property is one year older. So happy birthday to your property, you get a tax break. So from a tax perspective, you get more benefits here from real estate, but real estate does come with its own downfalls because now you have to deal with more people. Like when you're investing in stocks, you're not dealing with anybody. You can go out and buy shares of Amazon or Lululemon or Chipotle and McDonald's and not have to deal with a single person. You can do this right off of your phone. You want to go out and buy a real estate property, you got to have a real estate agent, you got to have a property manager, you got to deal with a contractor, you got to deal with an attorney, and you got to deal with tenants. And so if you don't want to be in that game, the stock market is better for you. Plus with real estate, you're in charge. You're the one that actually has to make sure that your property is generating income and it's more work on your end because now you got to be the one that's negotiating the deal. And if your tenant doesn't pay or if your tenant damages the property, that's a cost that you have to pay.
And of course, the most obvious thing is that it takes a lot more cash to start investing in real estate than it does to start investing in the stock market. I mean, you can start investing in stocks with as little as $100, but if you wanna go out and buy a property, you can't do that for $100, at least not a good property. Now, while it's your decision on where you wanna invest your money here, here, or here, the idea stays the same, that you need to compound your money. The whole idea behind that is anytime you make money, you wanna reinvest at least some of it. That way your money is growing and the money your money made is growing. That way you can grow your money quicker and quicker and quicker over time because the real secret to building wealth is investing. Yes, we talk about that all the time, but if you really wanna grow your money quicker, you gotta compound your money, which means you gotta have more money in the fire that's burning to make you more money. But I guess if you're burning money, that's probably not what you wanna be doing, so bad example, but you gotta have more money working to make you more money. When you go out and you buy a bunch of things with 0% APR, you don't feel that pain of spending money because $1,000 isn't leaving your account today, you're just putting it on a payment plan for the next 12 months, and then you can go out and buy even more things with the help of 0% and APR. So now you're going out and buying a whole bunch of things that you wouldn't have otherwise, and now you put all these things on 0% APR,